I'm going to show you how to create a database using FileMaker Pro. So once you have the program open, if you click create a new file and click OK, and then give it a name, I'm going to call this one class, and then save it, and it will save automatically when you do data entries. What I'm looking at here is how to create fields. So I'm going to create a few fields. The first one I'm going to have is a creation date. And I'm going to make sure that the data type is correct. And then we'll do first name. And again, making sure that the data type is correct. Surname. And then I'm going to do another one that's going to join the two names together. So this one's going to be just called name, and it's going to be a calculation. And what I'm going to do in here is put the person's first name and a space and the surname. And that should put a field that has both their first and surname together in one field. I'm also going to create one for their height. Their date of birth. their eye colour, and lastly I'm going to do another one called that's going to be called photo, so I can show you the data type here called container. Now container in FileMaker Pro allows you to put in photos, movies and sounds. So now that I've got this, I'm going to go back and look at a couple of things. So I have my creation date, and I'm going to click on options here. And there's some things that I can do here. So I can go into auto entry, and I can have it so that it automatically enters data, such as the creation date, the date that it was modified, or it could be from the value of the last record, or it could be specific data that's repeated again and again, calculations, etc. Um, now, you have a an entry down here that says prohibit modification of the value during data entry. These are some uh, security settings that you can have. Be a little bit careful when using these sorts of things and be sure whether you need to use it or not. So I'm not real worried at the moment. This database doesn't need to be very secure. So I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to the next one which is name. And again go into options. I'm not going to want any auto entry for this one but I might want some validation. So validating is making sure that the data is as correct as possible when we enter it. So I can have things like not empty, a unique value, or an existing value. So you can limit these things. I can have data from the value list in a particular range, again by a calculation. What I'm going to do here is put one in so it's got a maximum of 12 characters. I can also create my own special display. So I can put in that 12 characters is the maximum. But you can have your own different message there if you like. I could do the same for surname, but I'm going to skip down to height. And again, go into the validation. Again, I've got the same rules in here, but this time I'm going to put in a range just so that I can show you what it looks like. So in here I have a range of 120 to 190. Again I could put a message in if I wanted that was going to be my own specific message. The next thing I'm going to go down is to eye colour because for eye colour what you want to do here is create it so that it's a member of a list. So I can create lists here and I can have multiple lists. So my, my list here is going to be called I and it's going to be a custom list. So I'll have things like Hazel, Green, Blue, and I can keep adding to this list as many as I want. And again, you can have multiple lists. So here's my database that, to start with. So when I come back to this screen, if I click OK, it gives me the database. Now you notice here it's already given me the date. 
that the database was created. So if I type in a name, you'll notice that entering the data in these first two, it's automatically put into the second one. If I put in a height, now remember, I put a limit on this one, so it's given me an, a message here that this is um, the message that would appear automatically, so this is the automatic message. I can do a revert field, which will put the value back to zero, or um, I've allowed it here that you, the data enter entry can be overridden by the person. So it's telling me it's not in range, do I want to allow it? I can actually do yes in this one uh, because it's something that's not um, needs to be exact. If you set it as exact, it would not allow you to do that sort of thing. I can enter a date of birth. Now with iColor, remember we set it up as though it was going to be a list, but the list hasn't appeared. We need to do something here. So what we need to do is go over to the layout menu, and if we click on eye color, and then what we need to do click on eye color and then we come down to format and come to format fields it'll give us this box here and allows us to do data entry as um, an edit box a pop-up list a pop-up menu check boxes check buttons so radio buttons could be used for things like gender check boxes can be you could be possibly used for things we've got multiple colors but I'm going to do it as a pop-up list and then I can either define my own value list or pick one that I've already created. Now I've already created one, so I'm going to leave this as it is. Now with the edit button, what this does is allows me to enter other ones. So I only entered the three into the eye color. So if somebody wants to edit into more, if I click on this, they can enter more. A problem with this though is that it allows people to enter thing data that could be incorrect. So you need to, again, make a decision as to whether it's going to be something that's specific that you control or whether you want people to enter data. So that's given me that. Now if I go back to the browse and I save my menu, if I click on the eye color, I can pick the color that I need. Now, if I want to um, save a sound, if I double click inside the box, it'll allow me to record a sound and put sounds in there. Uh, the way to get um, information such as pictures is if we go up to the insert menu and we can insert a, insert a picture and then obviously go off and find our picture depending on where it is. Uh, that's the basics of using FileMaker Pro. We'll look at these in a little bit more depth in a moment.